Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at freelancers and one in particular. I am of course referring to the freelancer Miss, a ship that was recently loaned to me for my A1 Spirit and I thought we'd make a video on it. It's one of four variants. I previously covered one of the best starter, uh, starter ships in my opinion which is that of the freelancer Max, um, which is a chunky monkey but plenty of storage and it comes with an asbo colored orange jacket so if you like that um, I will put a link somewhere on screen to go see that particular review that was when I first started out on Star Citizen so that was pretty cool anywho the Freelancer Miz then it is a military variant of the Freelancers it has some added bonuses that the others do not one being that this will have um, a substantial armor buff um, when armor comes to the game so this will have armor which again for a freelancer is nice freelancers tend to have good shields the shields on this are no exception they're pretty tanky it has plenty of firepower in the size of uh, the two cannons you can see strapped to the either side of the hole and of course it does get a ridiculous amount of missiles 28 size 3 missiles which is fairly impressive now obviously to accommodate said missiles, they had to remove some of the cargo space. You do still get 36 SEU, which is respectable. Um, that had to be sacrificed to store all the missiles. Um, where are you going to put them? You have to put them internally if there's nowhere else to put them externally. Um, so it's very unique looking, the MISC Freelancer ship in general. Um, although I don't hate the look of these things, because I don't, they do look good. But there's always been something that puts me off buying one for real because I just there's something about the way it looks that just doesn't sit right with me. I can't put my finger on what exactly it is. It looks cool, but clumpy to me. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that freelancers are bad ships. That's not what I'm saying because you know they are not. They are very good ships. I just don't. There's something that just doesn't sit right with me um, with the way they look. So once you get over that sort of hurdle, for me initially, you quickly begin to enjoy flying these ships and that's exactly what happened for me. So you can see it's also got a turret, manned, um, a manned turret on the rear of the vessel itself. Two engines um, with award winning technology, believe it or not. And we have some winglets there to help with aerodynamics um, for atmosphere. It handles pretty well. There's enough room in there to squeeze a ground vehicle or two. Um, you can get a rock, D, uh, a rock in there. I'm not sure if you'll get a DS in there. I imagine you probably would. Um, so you do sacrifice a little bit of cargo, but you will still be able to get ground vehicles in there and go rock mining if you decided to do so. I wouldn't classify this ship as a dogfighting ship per se. Um, I think if you get into a PVE situation, you'll have no problem crumbling the dumb AI as it is at the moment. But if you find yourself in a PVP situation, I think you'll find yourself quickly overrun um, we'll see what happens when we get these master modes. This is really going to be a pivotal point in the history of Star Citizen Combat. Um, I think it's a good step in the right direction, personally. Um, so, there are a few things uh, which can be irritating with the missed ships. Okay, so it's got the notorious cockpit with that slit um, visor, so to speak, for the cockpit, which offers limited visibility. They tried to counter that with um, some windows placed on top of the ship itself, as you can see here. Um, it does let a lot more light in, but in the pilot seat, you can't really see through those windows because you're sort of right underneath the roof. Um, so I think it's more for light more than it is visibility. Um, in terms of how would you use this ship then? Well, um, for me, I'm trying to think of roles in which would this would be useful. Now, barricade... Um, blockade running, sorry. Um, this ship will almost, almost certainly have a role um, with its barrage of missiles. You could clear a path. I also think it'd be fairly well suited to minor and small fleet protection roles because it has enough room on there to store cargo. I'm thinking maybe ammunition, medical supplies, you know, basic logistics. If you're running a fleet and you wanted something small that was a little bit tanky and had quite a formidable missile battery on board then this is a ship you might be looking to uh, crew and have with your fleet because I do think there are some merits to having all of these missiles it's small enough to get in various undetected places I would have thought and but big enough 
and tanky enough to take a little bit of a beating while dishing out quite a barrage of pain. That's my sort of theory with the ship, especially with that we haven't lost all the cargo. We still have some, so that might play a role in the future, logistically. We'll see how it all pans out, um, but it is interesting. Um, so we have these two wings, which will help with aerodynamics, and even those have size 3 missiles strapped underneath them. Um, so the prospect for this ship is very good. The landing gear are unique as well. We have like four landing gear at the rear, split into two sections, really. And then we have one solid landing gear underneath at the front, keeping that chunky cockpit um, from scraping on the ground. Now this ship is classified as, as a gunship. Um, I think missile boat is probably more appropriate. It's a medium size with a crew of one to four. 36 SCU. Um, to buy it in game is two and a half million um, Alpha UEC. Well, just a little bit over. A length of 38 meters, a beam of 23.5. The height is 9.5, combat speed is 154, with a max speed of 1,005 meters per second. Um, it is equipped with a uh, size 2 radar and two size 2 medium computers, basically. And then we'll cover some of the stock components as we progress through the, uh, through the video towards the end. We'll see what we get with its stock. The description for this ship reads as follows. The MISC Freelancer MIS is a militarized variant of the classic Freelancer ship. This version sacrifices cargo uh, capacity to make way for internal missile loading system. As a Freelancer variant, the MIS is well suited to patrol work and with 28 size 3 missiles, the MIS can punch well above its weight class. These qualities make it popular choice for militias and independent outfits. Um, so fairly popular for militias, which kind of makes sense because it can pummel quite a lot of things. And as you can see, we can get some vehicles in the back and that of course is the really cool Greycat STV. I love this thing. I mean, it's just awesome. It's amazing. And if you're wondering why my driver's doing that, he's listening to the radio and singing along. That's what I'm going with. Um, cool car. Love it to bits, one of my favourite ground vehicles and the mule, I do love the mule, I'm a sucker for the mule, um, but it does put things into comparison. Look at the size of the missiles compared to the little grey cat STV there, then that put things into perspective. Um, so yeah, they're pretty big and to have 28 size 3 missiles is almost certainly a recipe for wrecking things, I would have thought. Um, but yeah, grey cat STV, love it, it's absolutely fine, um, great fun, everyone should have one everyone should have one um so yeah you can fit vehicles in the back comfortably like i said you will get rock in there so rock mining isn't going to be an issue it does open up another revenue source for yourself if you wanted to mix and match um is it a good ship for a beginner uh, maybe a starting ship probably not it is a ship that is of course a limited time sail ship so it doesn't come around all that often and i think there are probably um the Freelancer Max, I think, is a better variant for beginners um, in and around the verse. Let's now then take a look at the inside of the ship as we've spent quite a substantial amount of time looking at its unique exterior. Let's leave it like that, shall we? Um, so here we have the cargo region. As you can see, um, not as big as some of the others, but enough in there for logistics. I do think this ship would make an excellent logistics ship for a fleet. You know, it's tanky, it's got the firepower, it would come in very handy um, if you can get your hands on one. I do think there are certain uses for that. Also, you can do a little bit of cargo trading as well, sure. Um, you're not going to make much, but at least the option's there for you. This is where the cargo has been sacrificed in order to fit the various uh, missiles. And as you can see, they're like stored on the racks to the left and right there in missile silo or tubes, we'll go with tubes, um, which rotate out as and when the missiles need to be deployed. Um, so this is the reason why you lose a lot of your cargo space is because you are carrying these monstrous missiles within the vessel itself. It's well lit in here. Um, very familiar MISC styling. I'm wondering how my Odyssey is going to look. Um, I imagine very similar. Um, I do love the look. The Odyssey, they nailed it with the styling of that ship. So I'm, I expect the interior will be similar to the Freelancers, if not improved. Um, that would be my guess. Uh, we have another small cargo room here, located adjacent the missile bay. Um, 
Not really going to get much in here either, um, but it's a good option to have because, again, I think logistics will be key for any fleet. So maybe you could just dedicate this to medical supplies. I think that would suit any large org down to a T or small. Um, just having a dedicated medical area, logistics, weapons, ammunition at the back, and then, of course, the giant um, missiles in the middle taking up quite a lot of room. So, again, very simplistic in here. Nothing untowards. And then we go towards the living area, habitation, if you like. Um, very cramped, very cramped in here. There is also an engineering station. You have a, a kitchen and a toilet area with shuttered doors. So you are catered for if you are in a four-man crew. No need to run this ship with a four-man crew unless you wanted to do such a thing. Um, it is easily flyable by itself as a solo player. Um, I've had no issues whatsoever. We'll only see... Um, just how complicated the engineering might be that you might want another player but I don't think you can you can also see here we have the four beds which double up as escape pods which is always a nice touch um, escape pods are obviously going to be crucial to your survival um, ideally you want to keep your character alive as long as possible I would have thought um, well I certainly would so it's all very linear simple and easy to read inside the interior so no real complaints, just a bit tight in the habitation area, I would say, of this ship. Moving to the front then, of course, we reach the cockpit. Now, I have some niggles with the cockpit, and that's not necessarily the visibility. The visibility isn't brilliant um, at all, okay? But it's not horrible. It's, it's borderline horrible, but it's not terrible, okay? Um, but there are some things I've noticed that... Um, irritate me with the cockpit and when we do the walk around I will explain why that is um, as you can see we have the two seats we have the um, sunroof windows there let's go for sunroof um, so we have two seats here located behind these two seats so you have the pilot on the left with the yoke system co-pilot on the right and then behind you there's another two stations for your extra crew members um, if you had them on board or want extra players then they can at least sit up front with you and help you with various tasks in operating the ships which is a very nice touch um, it is nicely lit in here I do like these um, LED strips that run underneath the side of the cockpit itself they're really cool add a nice little bit of light because um, it's quite enclosed cockpit light is quite important and that just helps with that extra being able to see what you're doing and stuff and then we have these two seats at the rear which again are adjacent to the living room and as you can see, it is quite cramped with those back seats. So for long journeys, that may not be an issue if you can just pop into the living room, I guess. Um, it, but it is quite a tight fit. Those seats are pushed right back against the uh, panel of that door there. Don't see it being an issue, just an observation, you know. Um, but nicely lit. Uh, hence, you know, with the lack of light coming in, I think they had to put those lights in there. And as I said in my previous Caterpillar video, I get moody when there's no really nice lights in spaceships i don't know why it just irritates me and i'm glad to see that this is a feature on board i mean even the buttons and stuff you can see here flickering in and around the cockpit um add to a little bit more immersion makes it feel sci-fi and that's why we're all here right because we like the sci-fi vibe yeah we do um so that's pretty cool um firepower it has four forward facing laser cannons this particular variant size 3 um, so it does put out a respectable amount of DPS again I think for clearing blockades this ship really is going to be able to punch through quite a lot um, especially if you have a few of them not to mention um, of course we've talked about the missiles quite a lot but I do feel that this missile animation is awesome um, really love that animation now just be warned there is a bug with this at the moment that once you open your missile bay and fire the missiles the doors close and the missiles stay out which is a bit unfortunate i'm sure they'll get around to fixing it when when the ship reaches and goes through its gold pass um but you can see how the missile system works here so they deploy you send them and then it appears that the mini rack if you look at the closest missiles here um, once they're gone like so duck down into that missile bay pick up a tube and send them which is a very nice animation I think that's really cool okay so some other things to think about 
um, now that I've thought about it for a little bit, I do think that this ship um, would make an excellent drug running ship. I wouldn't say its intended role was to dogfight, although I do feel like a really skilled pilot will have no problem dogfighting in this ship. It is fairly responsive for its size, it's got the firepower and it's got the shields and the armour, we know that, but I do feel that this particular ship would make an excellent drug runner for the same reasons. We've got the firepower to fight off the law, we can take some punishment, we've got the cargo in there, um, there's room for you to bring your friends. So in that respect, I think this ship would become pretty useful for drug runners and the fact that you can bring your friends along, you know, maybe hit a bunker or two as well at the same time, that could be pretty good fun, good times in the misc Miz with all the firepower and protection that you get with this ship. Um, I think drug running would be an excellent role for a ship that's being used by militia. That's, that seems to fit um, this ship's character a bit better than I would say, um, you know, maybe barricade running, maybe in Nine Tails will really I'll get to see just how effective it can be and, and throw those missiles a bit uh, around the verse and see what happens. Um, so what we'll do now guys is we're going to make our way to a cool landing spot in Area 18. I do like Area 18, it's my base of choice so to speak because it has everything at your fingertips. It's one train to get to the uh, spaceport and it's fairly easy to navigate to and from various areas in the system. Um, I do like Area 18. So here we can see we've parked the bad boy that is the freelancer Miz and what we will do guys is now begin our walk around of the ship because one thing for me to show you the rooms inside is another to give you a walk around and give you a sense of scale so we we'll, we will start that now okay so we're going to start at the front of the ship obviously we have the cockpit with its notorious very slim visibility windscreen there um, we do have some maneuvering thrusters you can see located just beneath the chin to the rear of the chin we have those maneuvering thrusters we do have a second entry point um, indicated by the ladder icon there. There are two points of access to the ship, which is nice. There's also a um, airlock in there as well for EVAing, which is pretty handy. We do, of course, have a weapon system located just behind that door. Moving towards the rear of the ship, we reach the engines. You can see the missiles are still bugged on top there, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm sure that'll get fixed once it goes through gold standard. Then we have even more missiles strapped to the wings, which does help with aerodynamics. You can see the gear there as well. Um, almost ski-like in their appearance. They do have rubber pads on as well, I believe, which is a nice touch. And then we come round the back where we have the engines. Well, a engine, I should say. Um, and of course, our second entry point, which is that of the cargo ramp. Um, so I just can't put my finger on what upsets me about the design of this ship. I wouldn't say it upsets me, it's just a, like a little niggle. What do you guys think about the look of the freelancers? Um, I'm interested to know, and is there any other uses that you think um, this ship will be useful for in the future? It's not about what it does now, because it's irrelevant. It's all about what it can do in the future. What was it designed to do? How would you use it? Again, I really like the drug running idea of this. Um, I think that holds a lot of potential, especially with the militia background. I do like that. And then we move through the other wing, and we reach the second weapon system. Um, located on the opposite side of course so we have plenty of firepower at the front and then back round to the front of the ship um, which is very unique um, it's a very unique cockpit and if you look at something like the Misk Odyssey um, I had to have one straight away because it just looked incredible um, and it has very similar cockpit styling to the freelancers which is um, kind of bizarre why I, I just can't it doesn't sit right with me the way these look but it is a fantastic ship. The freelancers are good ships. They are proven, you know? So anyway, that's enough of me um, prattling on about that. What we'll do now is make our way into the ship itself. So we will open said door. A little bit slow, but what's the rush? And in we go. So up the ramp, we are greeted by the turret station directly above us so we will hop in that while we are here there are some niggles which can't be helped with the design of this turret so up we go and right so what we need to do is test its depression and its firing zones it's responsive it's fairly quick obviously when you get to the front of the ship 
because of the way of the the way the hole is built. We have limited firing at the front, but that shouldn't be a problem, so the pilot should be dealing with that. In terms of gun depression around the back, it's not the best, um, especially as you point towards the rear of the ship. Obviously, you can't shoot your own ship. You're going to be shooting your shields. But again, we're fairly limited in the elevation of the guns as well, um, which is a little bit disappointing considering there's no obstructions there. I wouldn't say it's a, oh, well, I'm not buying it then thing. It's just something to watch out for. Um, there are very limited arcs of fire regarding the turret. So just be aware of that. Um, but still, better to have one than not. Um, as we come down then, so this is the main cargo area. We've all got all kinds of MFDs here, which I imagine will display what we're carrying at some point in the future. You'll also find uh, the component housing here in the rear of the ship. So we have our shields and avionics, radar and all that good stuff. Now I imagine when it gets the gold pass, these are going to be... Um, reworked so that they open and you can access these components because obviously um, that will be extremely important in the future in terms of layout I like it it's spacious it's um, silver and orange seems to be the theme like stainless steel kind of brushed gun steel color which is kind of cool um, I'm wondering if it will be the same for the Misc Odyssey. I imagine it will. I can't see him deviating from the manufacturer's sort of styling. So this is the kind of vibe you'll get in the Odyssey, which I don't mind. It's a very sort of mechanical feel you get in here. Um, another MFD with random things on it. General dock items, backup systems, zero point modules, origin, art core. Okay, okay. None of this makes sense, but did you see there was a little... Um, I mean, clearly they're placeholders, but there's a little taste of things of what might come in the future. Who knows? Then we have a docking collar here. Again, that would double up as a EVA access. And that's a nice smooth animation. We like that. So once you're inside the MISC Freelancer, it's a nice place to be. Um, so this is like a separate cargo area. And then we move through to the living quarters here. This is your kitchenette. Um, complete with drinks, sort of microwave I think there as well, possibly, and towels, because reasons. And then we have the toilet shower facility here, the toilet. Fairly standard stuff, again a lot of um, gun brush steel I think. And that toilet doesn't appear to, I think that's a click thing and that would fold out I believe, I'm not entirely sure I'm assuming it would be we have our second um, excuse me first entry point to the ship here which is a ladder system nothing extravagant functional does its job we have this engineering panel here where at least I think it's gonna going to be the engineering station that would make sense as the components are towards the rear of the ship so we can monitor all the things that are going on with the ship check everything's tip top then we have the four beds here for your four crew, which also double up as escape pods, which is important, obviously. Um, I do like escape pods. I do think that they will be very useful and helpful in the future. You know, your life is more important than your ship. You can always claim it on insurance. Then we come to the bridge forward stroke cockpit area. Again, I like the lights. I get moody if there are none, and there are plenty in here, and there needs to be because this. There doesn't seem to be a lot of natural light penetrating into the cabin, um, so I'm glad the lights are there. We have the two seats here, each with their own individual um, MFDs, which is nice. We have the co-pilot seat, and then we have the yoke and the pilot seat on the left. And it's quite a busy dashboard on this ship. As we look up, we get the two um, sunroof visors, windows, I think, um, which again, don't really let a lot of light in. Um, and when it does, it seems to hit the front of the cockpit. So we'll jump in the pilot seat right now. And we'll talk about the visibility. So before we do, let's take a look at the MFDs. Now, I am a little bit dubious about these MFDs. Because you can see, when you're holding the yoke, it your arms actually block out quite a lot of the information being displayed. Above the MFDs, we do get the switches to operate various systems in and around the switch. Um ship sorry um, and these MFDs here these are digital and look like they're projected from the um, black panels you can see on the dashboard itself don't like the radar 
where it is it's very difficult to see in bright light as you can see here um, so that's a little niggle um, so very sort of dark crowded tricky it's more tricky to operate than it needs to be is what I'm saying so we have the exterior buttons here and all of that good stuff but um, it just doesn't feel fluid to me this cockpit right and I think it's an issue with most freelancers um, that I've noticed like my arms when I'm trying to call to land using the MFD is uh, you can't see who you're trying to contact because your arms block out the MFDs and that is annoying um, and it can be annoying it's not I'm not gonna fly this ship ever again annoying it is just a little hindrance that I think needs a little bit of a tidy up so that's the tour of the freelancer let's then move on to components okay guys we are back at area 18 we're home so what we're going to do now is take a look at the ship's stock components which you will find as of 317.3 if you're watching this in the future this could of course all change i found my vandal mask i'm very happy complete accident but you know what i'll take it so let's get the miss rendered in and then go through the various systems that you will find on board a stock freelancer miss so let's get that squared away again we've got our flares okay so we'll start with the coolers we have two arctics these are good coolers um in my opinion they're size 2 grade 3 manufacturer ages dynamics um the arctics i've used on a few um ship builds and i've never had a problem with them so this ship does come with some fantastic stock components power plant we have the maelstrom which is a size 2 grade 3 again military um, again from Aegis Dynamics um, so there's a lot of military stuff here um, which is very impressive it does come with some good gear um, and then shields we have size 2 grade 3 again military no problem with them and the quantum drive is a, co uh, a cross field which is a very good QT drive so these are very good um, stock components all of them are military and the crossfield is a very good uh, QT drive in my opinion then we have the missiles um, for some reason it's saying I can't select the Thunderbolts which is annoying what about the arresters we have arrestor size 3 these are cross-section the Thunderbolts are in fact I believe EM they are EM missiles so we have two variants of size 3 missiles on board and it will not let me select one which is unfortunate um, but they are, I believe they are EM missiles which is all good um, so in terms of components um, for a stock ship it's very impressive what you get um, none of those components I would say particularly need swapping out at all um, unless you wanted to play around with your shield and weapon systems found on board the ship um, other, than, other than that I think it's a very well rounded very potent military component ship weapons we get the m5a cannons which are size 3 obviously they're the laser cannons we get four of them and the turret gunner as well will also have his own weapons which of course are the panthers i believe we'll just double check that real quick uh badges sorry badges yeah panthers are size 3 so size 2 badges for the turret which is yeah overall components wise very impressive very impressive indeed so that would be at your discretion how you wish to tailor the ship but at, come in stock it's uh, very impressive so guys that's going to wrap up my video on the freelancer Miz I hope you enjoyed it if you did you know what buttons to press let me know your thoughts about the ship in the comments I'm interested to see how you're going to use one if you have one what your thoughts are about it what you feel about the aesthetics and I will have more content en route to your location very soon thanks for watching guys take care Cheers.